Dolly, 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 TLT. Who's, who's the former athlete here, me or you? Why, because I'm going so slow. Oh my god. I look like I'm struggling. It, look, it looks nice from off here, actually. We finally made it. We are in the supporter section of Bank of America Stadium. He's Lloyd Sam, I'm Eric Krakauer. This is Crown Talk. So I'm wondering <laughs> if I even keep shades on. I'll, I'll I, think you you I think you should keep the butt. You know, sitting here in the stadium, Bank yeah. of America Stadium, I think back to where we were in Orlando, and you really get an understanding of the magnitude of this venue, just how enormous it is, how cavernous it is, and how loud it gets as well when you know the two bottom rings are packed to capacity. Obviously, it's been a long away trip. How many games was that? Three or four, including in Open row. Cup. Yeah. It's nice to be four back. Open Cup, yeah. It's nice to be back here. We sat in the supporter section because we need the supporters on the weekend. I think the supporters are excited. I think. We need the most noise we've ever heard. The team needs that. And we've had some really good performances here with the fans. And it's going to need to be like that again. And one thing that you and I talked about during the broadcast in that game against Orlando was that the Orlando fans were extremely loud. And the stadium wasn't even half full. And that really energized Orlando's players. You know, they needed a result at home and the crowd was behind them. And that really doesn't come close to the kind of, you know, ear-splitting environment that you get in this stadium. When the, the supporters are behind Charlotte, they play a lot better. They play on the front foot. We saw that in the second half against Orlando, yeah. certainly not in the first. So if we're talking about Orlando, let me take my shades off for starters, because, you know, let's, let's get serious before we get into the good stuff. A story of two halves, for the most part. I think that's simplifying it, because yeah. the first 10 minutes, were really positive. We liked the, mm, the energy that they got good. into the game with. I was encouraged by that first 10 minute start. So I remember I was getting comfortable in my chair in the stadium. I thought this was going to be a good game for us. And then the goal flies in and it almost deflates us. And maybe on that goal, it's a learning lesson. That's the silver lining here. That should be a standard now. We, remember that game, that, that never happens again. And then if you learn that lesson, you move on and you can get better. You say game of two halves. The second half, it was better, but Orlando dropped off and just kept their shape and we couldn't break them down. So to me... There wasn't any real threat for all the possession. I put that whole game, I'd say, behind us. The second yeah. half, there wasn't much chances for Orlando, but it's we like didn't a, have chances either. At Philadelphia 2.0. <laughs> I, just before the we... The second game we don't speak of. The second game we don't right, speak cool. of. Let's shift. One point on that long road stint now three consecutive games at home. Inter Miami on Saturday, that's followed by Montreal, who are doing very well, and Vancouver, who are struggling. But focusing on uh, Miami itself, this is a team that was going on a pretty good run until they lost this past weekend. They also have a considerable amount of losses in terms of personnel. Leo Campane is a doubt. He's their goal scorer. So this really is the time what to face it. What do you think them. I'm going to say? It doesn't even matter. It, they're meeting an angry team that's at home and hasn't been at home for a month. That's all. That's the storyline for me. They come in, they're meeting an angry team. We're the angry team now. Yeah. Last week yeah, it was that's Orlando. A good point. They we lost. need to be the angry team. I'm sure we are. Yeah. I'm sure we are the angry team. They have got some guys missing, but we just need to turn up. And, and I think we will. Uh, there's been times where we've needed to in the team has responded in the right ways, especially when we're back at home. Second best record at home in Major League Soccer. So playing in this venue counts. It makes an enormous difference and they have to capitalize on that. Some market moves in between that Colorado game. In some fact, interesting moves. Some of them were being made before the, uh, excuse me, not the Colorado game, the Orlando game. Yeah. I mentioned Colorado because one of the players who has arrived yeah. is uh, Andrea Shinishiki, yeah. who is a uh, Brazilian born player who played in college here, 2019 Rookie of the Year. He had that first incredible season in Colorado, all of a sudden pushed to the margins, yeah. but an opportunity here to make a difference and find his best football. The versatility is amazing. Left wing, right wing. He can play up top. He can play attacking midfield. I think it's a, it's a good bit of business. I hear we were after him for some time. Yep. So getting him in, he takes players on 1v1. Yep. We're crying out for this. Yeah, that's, what we, that's what we lack. We lack depth in the attack. Ideas. And we lack Attacking ideas. Creativity, imagination. Yeah. That hasn't really 
occurred too often in games. Some moments of brilliance, right? You got Schwiderski yeah. against Cincinnati and, and New England. You got the Olympico scored by a Jordi Alcivar. Yeah, so, yeah. But we need more of that. We need more of that attacking spark. We need more guys that can do it as well. Right. And more competition. So when a guy's quiet, someone else can maybe do it. So Shinyashiki, for starters, 1v1 ability. And I've heard he's got, you know, he feels like he has things to prove, which yeah. is great. So he's going to be motivated. I feel like he really just needs a home that appreciates yeah. him. So, you know, I, I'm looking forward to him getting well, out he'll there. find a welcoming home here because if, if there's one thing that we've seen from the, from the fan base in Charlotte is that they really embrace players. Yeah. Even when a player has a bad game, most of the fans still embrace that player. Another uh, winger coming in from Feyenoord in, in Portugal in, this, in the second division there, yeah. uh, Carolyn Vargas, someone that after watching some video, you're very excited about. In fact, you tweeted about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tweeted that was very, very, if I write very, very, you know what I'm saying, then you know that I've done some <laughs> research and I'm really, yeah. again, these are videos I've seen, yeah. but everything I saw about him was about his, his appetite for the game. Yeah. He looks like he really loves playing football. I give, love me, uh, give me a sunglass reaction to Carolyn Vargas. A sunglass reaction? Yeah. Uh, what would you do with your sunglasses to really show that you appreciate <laughs> the way that he plays? <laughs> How would I give a sunglass reaction? I know, maybe raise them a little bit, you know? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that wasn't what I was looking for. That's anyway, not what I, I interrupted you. Sorry, man. You were in your train of thought and I totally derailed it. I, I was it. put on the spot. I, 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 yeah. But I like you that. You know, maybe like just that. a little. That's the one I that's was looking for. That's the one right, I was looking cool, for. Cool, okay. cool. All right, so really excited about him. He's another one. As I said, the appetite for the game, first of all, 20 years old. I don't want to take any of that out away from him when he comes. He looks so excited about playing football, looks excited about taking men on, scoring goals. Again, it's something we need. Ideas. Yep. Give it to someone and they can go and make something happen. It's like in other sports like basketball and ISO, and ISO right? You just give it to a creative yeah, yeah, player yeah. and you don't have to draw up any plays. Yeah. He just uses his creativity. So we've got a couple guys like that. Vargas, I love the way he gets in the box to score goals. So myself, I was a winger and that's, he plays somewhat like, but he looks for goals, which yeah. I, I was more of an assist man. And that's why, when I look at him, I'm like, he's got a lot of attributes that could really help this team and, and, and could be a star in this league if it goes right. Obviously, he likes to do backflips when he scores. That'll be interesting. Uh, I think the fans will probably like that. I yeah, they, they will, absolutely, <laughs> right? It goes back to the word that you used. He's got an appetite for the game. He likes to celebrate. There's pomp and circumstance, another thing that will galvanize a fan base, particularly when the results aren't always going too well. One of the things that I think he's going to be incredibly amazed by is that he's never played in an environment like the one he's going to see here at Bank yeah. of America Stadium. You don't see that very often, right? I mean, and he, especially not in a, in a Portuguese second division. Take my word for it. Yeah. You know, I'm from Portugal. So I think he's, he's only going to be uh, more... <laughs> I am from Portugal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's the truth. That's the truth. I speak from experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's only going to be more... More... What's the word? I don't want to use energized again. Inspired. Inspired. That's the word. Oh, right oh you uh, are a book of synonyms. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be inspired. I mean, our fans just want to party. Yeah. Are you ready to party is our slogan. Yeah. They want reasons to be excited. When I watch games, I see like when they make noise, when a good play happens, it's either attacking, defensive. Yeah. He's going to be someone that's going to give reasons, a bit yeah. of flair. Someone, as I said, looking excited to play the game and making chances. I think the future is bright with these guys coming in. I've got some commentary lines that I'm ready to spit out oh, when yeah? the moment arises, and I feel like he's <laughs> the kind of player who will allow me to deliver them. Okay, you uh, got in, in you'll your little, know it when I in your little them. book, yeah. Uh, you know, the book is right here, and my little book. You're talking about my commentary Bible. I know Bible. your little book. I know. You know, you got your little you know, I add little you things to it every once in a while. <laughs> you talked about being inspired. I think the fans want to be inspired. So hopefully on Saturday at 3.30 p.m. against Inter Miami, Charlotte FC will give them plenty to be inspired about. If you don't get to see the game in person, watch us as we broadcast it. And hopefully we broadcast the win. Good stuff. I like it. I like it.